Hi, welcome to another edition of Easy Theory. So today we're going to do another recursive problem, which is something called the Tower or Towers of Hanoi. So a lot of you have probably heard this problem, but if you haven't, I'll freeze it for you. So it's kind of a strange problem, so it's not like something to do with arrays or anything. But we have basically this long uh, uh, plane right here. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it down here and make it a little smaller. Put it up here so that we can actually see it at the same time. Okay, so what we have are three different uh, pegs right here. And you could um, generalize it to more, but initially we have three. So on one of the pegs, we have a bunch of disks that, that I'm going to put in red. And so let's just say we have four right here. And I'm going to color them in. So what we want to do is we want to move them for whatever reason from, say, this peg to this peg, or, or this one. It's symmetric. So I want to move all of them from here to here. So, yes, that's the goal. So the goal is to uh, move all pegs, uh, not pegs, all cylinders from one peg to another. And that may seem completely trivial, right? You can just take this top one and then put it over this one and over, etc. The So the problem is we can't have a scenario like where we have one like this, one cylinder like this, and a bigger one on top. So we are not allowed to have a scenario like this. Okay, so whenever we move a cylinder from one peg to another, we have to put um, only a smaller cylinder on top of a bigger one. It doesn't matter how big the small the one underneath is, as long as the one on top is smaller than the one on the bottom. So we could potentially, for example, have a really wide cylinder right here and a really tiny one right above it. That's totally fine. They don't have to be adjacent to each other from the original peg that they're from. Okay, so the thing is, well, how do we actually phrase this in a recursive way? So here's one way that we're going to actually do it. So again, here are the three pegs. And let's just say we have our end cylinders right here. I'll, let's just put three, for example. Um, so what we can do is we can say, well, in recursive, uh, in the recursive land, what is a simpler version of the same problem? Well, a simpler version of the same problem is when we have n minus one pegs. So uh, I mean cylinders. So let's just say we don't have that bottom cylinder on, and let's just say that the bottom cylinder is right here, and all of the n minus one are right here instead. So how do we actually go from this subproblem, which is a slightly easier than using n cylinders, how do we do with, deal with n minus 1? Well, what we do is let's just say that this one on the right is the destination. Then what we do is we actually move this last one over to here because this one is the biggest one because the n minus 1 over here will each one is um, smaller than the one underneath it, and this one, let's just say, is the biggest one, then if we move this guy over and then assume that we can move all of the n minus 1 on top of the biggest one right here, then we have solved the original problem. So it's actually kind of like a double recursion. It's saying, like, suppose that we can move the biggest one um, cylinder out from underneath all of the other ones, then what we do is we move the biggest one to the to the other cylinder and assume that we can move the other n minus one back oops the other n minus one 
onto this uh, the big one over here that we just moved. So that's actually the whole idea. And you may think, well, okay, what's the base case? What's, we did the inductive case, which is we have n minus 1 over here and then the big one in the center peg. How do we actually deal with um, the base case? Well, it turns out that the base case is really easy. It's when you have nothing to move, right? If, if you have nothing to move, then you're done. So that's actually all that we need to do. So let's write a recursive of... Uh, yeah, recursive function towers of Hanoi with uh, n disks. So how do we actually deal with n disks right here? So I'm going to assume that um, uh, all initially uh, on the first peg. Okay, uh, so we're going to assume that there are three pegs here to make things easy. So how do we actually uh, deal with this here? So what we're going to do is we're going to assume that uh, we're not in the base case because the base case is we have nothing to do. So how do we uh, tell if we have something to do? Well, that means that the n here is positive. So if n is at least 0, then what we need to do is to work with uh, n minus 1 pegs and the biggest one. Okay. So how do we actually do this here? So what we do is we uh, assume that we can move the n minus 1 pegs to the center um, one. But this is saying that we need to move the n pegs from the first one to the third one. So if I want to move them all to the second one, let's say, or, or something like that, then what we need to do is to actually indicate here what is our source and where all the pegs, where the end pegs are located, where am I trying to move them to, and where is the temporary, the, the third peg that we can use um, for storing any other additional cylinders. So how do we actually do this here? So I'm going to actually augment this function. Um, I'm going to put it in green. So with what the source is, so where the end uh, cylinders actually are, where is the destination, and where the other uh, peg actually is. Okay, and so this, this condition is still the same, no problem. So what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to move the, t the top n minus 1, or equivalently the bottom one, to the, um, to the other one, the, to, to this, um, this other peg. So we're assuming that we can, we know how to do that. So I'm going to, in purple, call Towers of Hanoi with n minus 1, so a subproblem. Well, these n minus 1, the ones on the top, are still on that first peg. So I need to put source here. Still source. But now I'm going to try to move them to this other peg because... Eventually, I want to move them all to the destination. So here, the third argument is going to be other. And then the destination is the, the third peg, which we may or may not use. Okay, so in this scenario right here, we're assuming that we have the three pegs right here. So this one is the source. Let's see if I actually can see that. No. Okay, so it was cut off. So let me move it over here. Yeah. So this one on the left is the source. This one is, let's just say, is the other one. Or, or the destination. It doesn't really matter because it's all symmetric. And then this one is the other. So source, destination, other. So after this call, this is assuming that um, the n minus 1 are over here. And the biggest one is right here on the on still on the source one and we want to move all of them to this particular peg right here so how do we do that well this biggest one has to be on the bottom no matter what so that means that um after we do this after we assume we know how to do this 
then I'm going to move um, the the one cylinder from uh, from source to dest because at this point there can only be one cylinder, assuming we know uh, that the other n minus one are moved, and then what we need to do is once this oops so once this part is done then what does the scenario look like it looks like this where the biggest one is now on the destination peg so now we just need to assume that we can move these n minus 1 over to here in onto the center peg so again in purple i'm going to call towers of hanoi towers of hanoi with n minus 1 Oops, I gotta put the parameters in. So what's the, the source of where these are coming from? Well, this is coming from the other peg. So the second argument here is other because this one is the other peg. Then where are they going to? They're going to this one, which is the destination. And the other peg is this one, which is the source peg. And that's it. So. This is actually a really nice use of recursion, and in the next video, we're gonna actually do an example of this. So I hope that was interesting. Leave a comment down below if you have anything interesting about the Towers of Hanoi problem. A really interesting thing that I should mention is that what if we wanted to have more pegs? So if I wanted to have, say, 10 pegs instead of three, what is the runtime in that case? And actually, in this case, what is the runtime? So in the comments, put uh, what you think the runtime actually is and how you actually were able to derive it. So I hope that was interesting. Please like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. And as always, I'll see you next time.